a trilogy of terror on tap. Of all the haunted inns of the city, one stands out. Whistle Binkies is situated at the top of Nidri Street and is accessible also from North Bridge. The pub opened in the 1990s and has been the host of paranormal incidents. In the autumn of 2020, Spirit Vision Paranormal Research and I ventured to this famous haunted city hostelry. An all-night paranormal investigation would follow. Two recorded spirits haunt Whistlebinkies. They have come to be known as the Imp and the Watcher. When walking into the unfinished venue in November 1994, the bar designer spotted the back of a shape wearing a long dress. He later found out that it wasn't a dress the spirit was wearing, but it was the watcher in his 17th century gentleman's coat. He followed the figure down into the cellar, but there was nobody there when he ran after it. He sketched what he saw, and the only picture in existence was of the ghost. Staff were left baffled by one particularly bizarre incident in December 1994. An orange was chopped and peeled on the bar while staff all had their backs turned and washed and put away glasses. To this day, nobody knows how it happened. This incredibly creepy encounter happened in February 1995. Staff refused to enter the cellar at Whistlebinkies after hearing shuffling noises at the bottom of the stairs. Who knows what was going on down there? One particularly alarming incident involved a barmaid alone in the pub stocking up before opening time. After going down to the cellar to get wine, she grappled with the heavy crate and staggered towards the stairs. However, when she tried to kick the door open, it wouldn't budge. She pushed the door again, but still wouldn't move. She continued to shove the door and scream for help without joy. Eventually, realising she was trapped in the cellar, as she began to cry, the door dramatically swung open, and she was able to leave. In March 1995, clock inside the pub repeatedly stopped at 4.45 a.m. Much to the confusion of the first person on shift that day, the imp was believed to be responsible for this pesky activity. In the same month, staff began to speak about things moving around in the cellar. The incident came just weeks after another employee came running out of the basement complaining that she heard shuffling noises. Avoiding that area would be a wise move, it seems. An American backpacker standing nearby had the contents of his bag emptied on the ground and smashed up. Nobody was anywhere near him at the time of the incident in July 19. In October 1996, the watcher appeared twice in the pub after an absence of more than a year. However, sightings have dried up since. Situated Halfway down the Royal Mile, the Mitre is famous for being home to the ghost of a 17th century archbishop who lived here centuries ago and now refuses to leave. The pub has a rich and intriguing history. In 1615, the site was occupied by a tenement owned by John Spottiswood, the Bishop of St Andrews. The building burned down in 1814 and was replaced by the Mitre Bar. According to local legend, the bishop's throne is buried under the bar area 
and his spirit is said to haunt the pub. Bar staff and contractors have witnessed mysterious phenomena over the years, such as in 1993 when a team of electricians suffered electric shocks from appliances despite all power in the building being turned off. The Mitre's resident poltergeist is very protective of the pub's jukebox and will turn it off and on according to its taste. Engineers installing new components or attempting to fix the jukebox have reported being pushed in the back and thrown to the floor. The Leith Depot The Leith Depot, situated at 138 Leith Walk, is a pub with a haunted history. In the late 70s, the premises then known as Maranello's popular bar of the day. The pub would continue throughout the years under several different names. The Bay City, the Meridian and now Leith Depot. But one previous title hold a chilling legacy of events. In 1996, the PJ Lyles pub in Leith Walk was the site of a series of strange occurrences. Staff were disturbed by weird noises heard when no one else was present in the building. An unknown force moved glasses and other objects around after being left overnight. There were various odd incidents. The landlady Elaine suspected that the spirit of a previous customer had been upset by changes made to the pub. Events came to a head one weekend, as Elaine explained. One Friday, a few of us were clearing up and we heard footsteps running across the ceiling above us. Incidents continued. On Sunday, the police called the assistant manager to the pub as the burglar alarm was ringing. The event was not unusual, but when he arrived, Something had pulled down curtains over the windows upstairs and an unknown presence had thrown pot plants and other items to the floor. The incident was peculiar, but what was truly disturbing was that the footsteps did not come to a halt and carried on as if whatever was making them had run right through the wall. It was as if someone had stormed through the building in a mad frenzy. However, following an examination of the premises, it was clear that no one had broken into the pub and staff had securely locked the door as it had been the night before. It was a mystery that unnerved the team to such an extent that several said they wouldn't work there again till whatever was behind the strange incidents was gone. The Banshee Labyrinth The former site of 16th century tyrant Lord Edward's home sits close to this Edinburgh city centre pub. Many consider this another explanation behind the ghostly goings on. Lord Edwards would bring women to his home when he suspected them of being witches and would torture them into confessing. It is believed that some of the apparitions seen by pub goers are these wronged women. The theory includes the banshee that the labyrinth was named after. One workman had a terrifying experience with the famed Banshee when the pub was being renovated. The story goes that the man saw a woman sobbing who lifted her head to reveal a pale face with empty eye sockets. She gave a blood-curdling scream and just minutes later the man answered a phone call from someone telling him that a member of his family had passed away. The spine-tingling story led to the owners renaming the pub after the Wailing Banshee.
standing outside the Banshee Labyrinth, which is Edinburgh's most haunted pub. There's hundreds of stories concerning this place and various spirits have been seen. One of the spirits that haunts here is a girl called Molly. A young girl has been seen by people, staff and customers. I went and did a wee investigation there about a month ago and the bar person there working at the time, SJ, showed me a photograph she took one morning when she returned and opened the pub. She was the only person in there, there'd been nobody in overnight. There was a child's handprint pressed against the condensation of the inside of the window. This pub has a license which does not allow children into it. Where the handprint came from, nobody knows, but it definitely was there. The Banshee Labyrinth has many, many stories attached to it, but prior to it being the Banshee Labyrinth, it was called the Nickel Edwards. Many people from Embra, from an older generation, might know it as that pub. When it became the Banshee Labyrinth, it had been done up, and the current owner at the time was in there painting. This is just to help do the bar up before it was opening. The owner was there, his wife and his daughter, who at the time was about four years old. She tugged her dad's sleeve while they were busy painting. This is during the day, by the way, and said to her father, who's the fire ghost? Her dad looked puzzled. What fire ghost? The man on fire, she said, the man in the door that's staring at you. They downed their tools and left, and who could blame them?